Hello, this is Mr. Watkins. Uh, you're going to be watching another uh, video lecture. This one will be on ATP. And this video um, basically came about because I've had some questions from some students and want to try to answer those questions as concisely as possible. Uh, the question really was, is, you know, what is ATP? And uh, the other question is, you know, how, how how do you, when you make ATP, are you you're gaining energy or storing energy? And I kind of wanted to, to answer those questions and make sure that we have a good understanding of what's going on. So this molecule right here is ATP. It's got three phosphate groups. It's got a sugar called ribose. And it has this nitrogenous base called adenosine. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now, the storage piece now is, is basically the entire molecule. The position of the atoms in any molecule helps determine that potential energy, and we've got bond energy and other things that you can talk about with chemistry. But in biology, where we're really interested in, or what we really want to see, um, is this energy that's stored here in the bonds between these phosphates. So I have three phosphates here in this, almost like a tail, if you will, and so that's where we get the triphosphate. We have another molecule called AD, like in dog, ADP, and so we have our two phosphates, adenosine diphosphate, and um, basically what ends up happening is as energy is added to ADP, we can add in a phosphate group, and so we've increased the amount of energy stored here, or stored in ADP, to now a TP, and uh, so that molecule is now available to hold on to that energy. Now, one of the things you need to know here is that uh, the energy, roughly, we tend to use 7.3 kilocalories per mole for the amount, a, a mole, of this ATP. When uh, glucose, just glucose by itself, we typically use the number 686 kilocalories per mole. So you can see that adenosine is a, or excuse me, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is a, a smaller um, stored amount of energy. Um, these bonds are weak bonds here, so they break pr pretty easily, but when they do, they do provide enough energy and sometimes a little more than enough energy to be used to maybe build other molecules or um, break apart other molecules. So let's have a look-see at what I'm talking about here with the building and the breaking of the molecules. And um, uh, first let's just talk about how this thing gets put in, how the energy, excuse me, gets put into ATP. So we have adenosine diphosphate. It's got the two phosphate molecules. We're going to have to add uh, inorganic phosphate and that's a PO4. And uh, we're going to add in energy and by adding that energy in, we're going to be gaining some energy here in a sense that we are storing it in ATP. Now, the question is going to be is where did that energy come from? Remember that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So when we're dealing with things like, say, photosynthesis, this energy is um, generated by the movement of the hydrogen ions through uh, a channel protein through their uh, CF1 top there, the ATP synthase molecule. So the source of that energy may vary depending upon what reaction you're looking at. Just wanted you to know that this energy comes from probably another molecule and that energy then is stored in ATP. When the cell needs to use that energy to do work, to do some function, whether that's to build glucose or you know, to tear apart a molecule, um, it's going to take that ATP and it's just the reverse reaction and what we're going to end up having is um, the ATP is going to give us adenosine diphosphate and we're going to get that inorganic phosphate with energy being released. That energy then would be used to build a molecule. When a molecule is given a phosphate, when a molecule has a phosphate added to it, we say that that molecule has been phosphorylated. When a molecule 
has a phosphate removed, such as in this case, then we say it's been dephosphorylated. And these are some terms that we use as we go through and talk um, about how molecules are changed. Now, a very good example in photosynthesis has to do with the reaction that we generally talk about right off the bat, and that's ribulose uh, phosphate and it has one phosphate on it. ATP comes in, so we'll add some ATP. ATP comes in and basically phosphorylates the ribulose. So ATP would be dephosphorylated. The ribulose would pick up the phosphorylate, uh, or pick up the phosphate, and so instead of just having one, it now has two, and we get a molecule called ribulose diphosphate. This ribulose diphosphate is um, the molecule that carbon dioxide will bond with in the Calvin cycle and uh, this has ribulose has five carbons so when we add the carbon dioxide we're going to pick up another carbon unfortunately it's not stable and that molecule breaks apart pretty easily but the ATP in this case gives up its energy through that phosphate to phosphorylate the ribulose phosphate to phosphorylate this molecule ATP is dephosphorylated, the ribulose is phosphorylated. Energy really hasn't changed in the sense of being made or created. It's just changed where it is. It's just been transferred from one molecule to another. Just to recap, ATP is a energy currency molecule that the cell uses. It has these three pieces, a phosphate or phosphate groups that are out here on the end, ribose sugar, and adenosine, all of these work together to store that energy, make that energy very usable so that the cell can build or destroy those molecules that it needs. Thank you.